Hello there, you precious people of God and all you people who don't know Jesus Christ. I hope you come to know Jesus Christ. Maybe uh, my video right here, my little testimony will have an effect on you. I wouldn't say it's a little testimony. <laughs> it's quite a big testimony. It's amazing what the living God can do in a person's life if you yield to him. Um, I was not always Christian. I was, I was actually a Mormon for, um, from the time I was 12 until, um, somewhere in my 20s or early 30s. Um, I used to think everybody was good. I thought people were good people. I looked at the outside appearance of man and judged like that. I um I thought people were good people. People are not good people. No, sorry, neither am I or was I. I'm a new creation in Christ now. But um we actually have a deceitfully wicked heart. That's what the Bible says. And it's true. And we have a sinful nature. And we have, uh, we, we go towards what's evil because of the fallen sinful nature. And that's what I did. And I was without knowledge. Without knowledge of God in the world. I always knew God is a distant God. I never knew him as a, oh my gosh, <laughs> I never knew him as a personal loving father. <sighs> Until about five years ago in October, <laughs> actually it's October 31st today, it's almost exactly five years ago. I don't remember the exact date in October, but it was five years ago in the month of October, which we're in right now, that um, I came to know the living God that I always knew as a distant God. And my life has never been the same. And I'm glad for it. Because I was dark. I was dead in my trespasses and sins. I was wicked and liking evil, wicked things and in dark, dirty sin that's not okay with God. But let me, let me tell you, before I got there, something was happening inside of me that, um, I didn't understand, but I understand now it was God drawing me to him. Um... There was an emptiness inside of me. Food didn't satisfy it anymore. People didn't satisfy it anymore. The next exciting place to go to do something, it didn't satisfy me anymore. And um, I was longing for something deeper, but I didn't know what it was. Also, this false reality of things that I had in my mind that this world was fair, you know, it was breaking. I had these delusions in my mind that we had a good government, like... A good court system, justice. <laughs> Only justice you're gonna get is with God, and it won't necessarily be here. Um, it'll be in heaven. Um, my husband had been falsely accused during this time in my life five years ago. Um, falsely accused of something, and the court system was so evil. <laughs> they were so corrupted. Judge trying to get him to go in the back and coerce him into a deal. Just, 
it's just we learned it's a corrupt system and praise god he he got out free praise god but um it woke me up it started doing something in me making me realize that the world's not quite like i thought it was i don't know god was using that situation to break things down in me and i think he used that kind to kind of um, draw me to. And, but nothing satisfied. And I was longing for something. So one day. Five years ago. I was sitting. Like three feet away from me. At my computer desk. And a thought came into my head. To type in a letter from God. On YouTube. Mind you, I had never, ever, 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 ever heard the Bible. Mm -mm. I had never been to a Christian church. <coughs> I didn't even under understand what Jesus did. I had never heard the gospel. I had never... Other than what the Mormons, what I'd learned from the Mormons, and I had a disoriented idea of who Jesus was. I didn't even know, I didn't even understand Jesus, but I knew it at the Mormon church, they have two pictures, they have a picture of two Jesuses. It's confusing. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't understand who Jesus was, and I had never heard scriptures before. Never. Can you believe it? I never did. I I had been I had been boxed in my my in my life it's like <laughs> it's it's crazy like I never heard the scriptures I never heard the gospel I I was never around Christians So I got this idea to type in a letter from God on YouTube and I did And Father's love letter came up and I listened to that video and the voice on there of that man. Oh, it was just in the music and the words, number one. Those words. Everything combined, it was sinking into me so deeply. It, it, was, it was the Holy Spirit on that video. The Holy Spirit. I didn't know, understand. I didn't, I, the, the, the Mormons mentioned the Holy Spirit, but they have a different Holy Spirit. <laughs> they don't have the Holy Spirit of the Bible. And, and I, I didn't under, I didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit. Um, really, actually, when I received the Lord from that video, I didn't even know that I had received the Holy Spirit until God helped me make sense of things in my mind and <laughs> reveal what happened to me but um i watched that video and it was so touching it talked about how he knows how many hairs are on my head and he's a shepherd and it was just so tender and amazing the words were actually scriptures and it, they came out of the word of God, the truths in that video. They weren't exactly worded as the scripture is, but they were truths. And I had always known God as a distant God. I, um, I talked about God in my life. Like God, you know, is good or God will it'll be okay. Like I was a Mormon. I had a friend and she would talk about God, but we didn't know God. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy how messed up we are without, without the Lord in our mind. And I, I, I knew him as a distant God, but I would talk about him, but I didn't know him. I didn't know him. And after that video, Something happened to me. <laughs> I couldn't explain it. 
But now I understand I was translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And he gave me his Holy Spirit that day. And it, it was so beautiful, the feeling, um, the love. I felt his love for the first time. I never felt God's love like that before. Like, he was a distant God to me, but I talked about him. Like, I just, I didn't give heaven or much of a thought. In fact, I believe that the Mormon belief doctrine that I was taught, that there's celestial, telestial, and I don't know. There's like three different levels of where you can go when you die. Um, but... I didn't give uh, things of the spirit any thought, much thought. I was uh, carnal. I was very carnal and into my sexual sin. And, um, oh no, God stepped into my reality that day. God stepped into my reality that day. In into my soul. <laughs> into me. <clears throat> He gave me his Holy Spirit. And then, um, not too long after that, um, God, uh, put it in my mind to go and, uh, get a Bible. And I had never wrote, read, read the Bible. I never even heard the Bible. So I began to listen to it. And then I went to go get my own Bible. And get this, I got a King James. This is, this is God. I had this vision in my mind of getting a large... I, I don't remember if it was a King James, but I had a vision of a large <laughs> Bible in my mind. A large print Bible. And then I went to the thrift store, and I said, do you have any Bibles? And instead of being like, oh, yeah, it's over there in aisle three, um, the guy's like, oh, yeah, let me go get it for you. This is my first Bible. And he brought the Bible. It was a King James. And can you believe it? It had my first and my middle name in that Bible. <laughs> that was amazing. Unfortunately, a friend stole it. But maybe she needed it more than me. I wish I had a picture or a video of it, but she, um, he, she, my first and my middle name was in that Bible, and I, I started reading the word, oh, I was hungry, I was, oh, I was so hungry, and I read that word, and it changed me, it blew my mind, the word of God is so amazing, it's so amazing, it's life-giving. It's, it's transforming. In Romans 12, 2, it says, Don't be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. All I knew was the will of the devil. All these things that the world teaches you are good, and I, they were, they're not good. <laughs> the Word of God is like a mirror, and it shows you yourself how you really are. And it teaches you about holiness and righteousness and to turn from evil things that we do, but we just don't even realize are evil until we get the Word of God and the truth in us. I used to think that being prideful was so good, but the Bible, no, Jesus wants us to be humble and meek and turn the other cheek and be peacemakers and forgiving and loving and tenderhearted. These are not the things that the world teaches us. The world teaches us to pay evil for evil. <clears throat> Jesus says, bless your enemies. So... Um, that's how I came to know the Lord. And then, not too long after, um, getting my Bible and starting to read it and everything, God, um, started, uh, uh, 
Bible study at the mental health association that I was part of because I had lost my mind. And I began to go there and God was doing work in me. And I've been growing in Christ and I'm grateful for it. But, um, let me, let me share a little bit more about what God has done in me. Let me tell you, all those doors I had open to the devil, all the sin, the especially the sexual sin, it was allowing demons in me. I was filled to the brim with demons. And these demons affect your mind. And I lost my mind I I did a lot of crazy things like threw things off my balcony I poured milk on my floor thinking I was painting the floor heaven one day I put laundry soap all over my floor um, I um I can't, I, I did crazier things than that. I can't, I can't remember right now. But I lost my ever-loving mind, and I did not um, have peace. I had a lot of anxiety and depression, and... Oh, one day I, I broke the dishes in my kitchen. I pulled down my microwave, got broken. Uh, I was just... um. I, I trusted people and went with people that Satan put in my path, but God supernaturally protected me and got me out of those situations. I, um, I ended up in the hospital, psych hospital, four times. Praise God, he, he used it for the good. I got social security. <laughs> And now I work for Jesus. Not the world. Not for things of this world. I'm all about the kingdom of Christ and helping other people come to repentance too. So they can be saved from hell. Which we deserve because we're not the good people you think we are. Nope. We ain't. So we evil. We have a deceitfully wicked heart and our, we're dead in our trespasses and sins without Jesus. But I, I lost my mind, but praise God for his word. I be, you know, I was listening to the word a lot. God uh, uh, directed me towards Christian music, and um, I just seek him. I, I've been seeking him every day for five years now, drawing close to him, listening to his word, listening to Christian worship, fellowshipping with other believers. And, and God has uh, been changing me and restoring my mind. In the Bible, there's scriptures where it says he restores our soul. People won't restore your soul. Psych meds won't restore your soul. Oh, they tried to dope me up with psych meds. Mm-mm, I was not having that. Mm-mm, I tried their little psych meds for a short time, but mm-mm. The Lord, he put it in me not to take psych meds. I refused to take psych meds. But I, I tried it out for a little while, a couple times. But that stuff, it just makes you worse. It's just horrible. I I made Jesus my strength. And, and I believe him at his word. And he is true to his word. He literally restores. He is continues to every day but I am not the the way I was when I first came to Christ and before Christ I am not I'm transformed I'm by the renewing of my mind by his word and his word and is an anchor for your soul if you have a sailboat and and it's at the dock and it doesn't have an anchor what happens the sailboat will drift off into the waters well that was like my that's like my mind um, if I'm not, if I don't have his word to stand on, if I'm not leaning on him and his word, and he is his word, then my mind drifts off and I go into la-la land. I go, 
man, I, w I had lost my mind. I lost my mind. I was not in a soundness of mind. But his word is that anchor to my soul. And it restores me. And it, and it has. God has given me a peace that surpasses all understanding and, 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 and sound thinking and clarity. And I'm grateful. So grateful. And I have a, I have joy. I have joy. And, and God has given me deliverance from those demons that really messed with my mind that were you know, it's through sin that they enter in. You have to turn from sin. Those ways are evil. You have to walk in holiness and righteousness with Jesus. And turn from the things that he says to turn from. And he'll restore your soul too. And he'll do a better job than any psych meds. And um, a better job than any psychiatrist or therapist can do. People kept on telling me, go to a therapist. You need a therapist. You need psych meds. No, I don't. I need Jesus Christ and I need his word. His word is an anchor to my soul. And he restores. The Holy Spirit can restore your soul too. Don't make people your strength. Don't make medicine. Get rid of your psych meds. Follow Jesus Christ. He will restore you. That stuff will always... Only make you worse. I'm a living testimony. So, um, I have, um, some evidence of where I was, um, on, um, on YouTube, I have a, a video of when I lost my ever-loving mind. I have a video here on uh, my YouTube channel. It says um, here, oops, Shelly Jovell, from the darkness to light, in the hands of the devil, to the loving arms of Jesus Christ. And I have a video right here that I had compiled a few years back when I lost my mind, um, and the, this is one of the days where I was screaming and stuff, and they took me to the psych hospital, um, so, let me see, I'm trying to get it to the part where you can, okay, hang on, here we go, I think I start coming out here. And they pull me out, and then they uh, take me to the psych hospital. You can see just how messed up I was in a second. All right, there we go. I lost my mind. I went through stuff. But um, I'm not ashamed. It just shows how mighty God is and what he can do. He can do mighty things if you'll just follow him. Read his word. Be transformed by his word. Listen to Christian worship music and sing it. Find other Christians to fellowship with. Pray to God. Don't make people your strength. Don't make therapists your strength. Cursed is the man that makes flesh his strength and whose heart departs from God. And I've seen it. I've seen it in people that I... I, I I, I love that I thought were my friends that know that knew Jesus and their heart departs from God and they get cold and mean and turn against me. Um, make don't make people your strength. Like, don't open up about the deep inner things to just people. I mean, it's good to open up to about <clears throat> things to people, but make God your number one that you go to. Go to him in prayer and talk to him about deep inner things. Talk to him. He's listening. He wants to hear you. He wants to comfort you. He wants to speak to you. And he wants to restore your soul like he restored my soul. And, 
and he'll do it better than psych meds or, or therapists or psychiatrists or anybody. This world is broken and it's corrupted and there's a battle for your soul every day. I pray that you come to Jesus if you don't know him. Um, read his word for yourself. These words transformed my soul, my life. I came to know the true and living God through the, the Bible. And you can too. Read the words for yourself. His word is, is life. Spirit and life. It's like living water. It's The word of God is, in Hebrews 4.12, it says the word of God is alive because it's him and it's his spirit. And active and sharper than a two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joint and marrow. And is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It will show you how you are like a mirror. God will chop things out of you that you don't want there in your soul. And, and, and put the fear of God in you if you receive his words as truth as what they are. And if you receive the fear of God in you, you'll turn from your sins that destroy your soul. And God will restore you. God doesn't wish anyone perish, but all come to repentance. Jesus brought me from <coughs> sexual sin and <coughs> evil things, including invoking demons to have sex with me, to a restored soul and freedom. And he can do the same for you. And he is so much better than your temporary fleshly sin that feels good for a moment but brings forth death. And sin destroys your soul. So turn from it. Turn to Jesus Christ. Well, you still can. Because he's coming back soon. He's coming soon. And many are on the broad path to hell. And don't even note it. No. Don't believe it or realize it. But because they don't want him. Not because he doesn't draw them. God draws everybody. But not everybody responds. Some people... I don't understand... But don't want God. Okay. <laughs> if you don't want him, you'll just get to go to hell. Because your ways are evil. You're evil. None of us are good. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. And without Christ, you're dead in your trespasses and sins. And you will go to hell. And God is right and just for it. Because we're wicked. And that's what wickedness deserves. But Jesus died so we could be reconciled back to God. He took the wrath of God on himself. He took the punishment for our sins. And, in, and by his blood we're reconciled back to God. Read the word. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Without doing that, you're proving what the will of Satan is. And you're led by Satan and his demons. And you're in bondage. You think you're free, but you're in bondage in your soul. And there is only one God, and that's Jesus. The Jesus of the Bible. Beware of another Jesus. There's fake Christians out there preaching doctrines of demons, which the word warns against. Got to read the word for yourself. Don't lean on man to teach you this word. Do not lean on man to teach you the word of God. They will, you will be deceived. You need to, you need to, I mean, pastors and preachers are out there, but there's a lot of wolves in sheep's clothing. And, and if you're not reading the word yourself, you will be deceived into false doctrines. You need to actually listen to and read the word yourself. And then God will lead you to some good, trustworthy you know pastors but but if you don't know the word yourself you can be deceived into doctrines of demons like like false jesus like like you gotta read this yourself if you don't you'll be deceived the day devil is cunning and he's he's trying to deceive a lot of people oh just read the word yourself read it yourself it is it is a light unto your path and a lamp unto your feet feet. It's an anchor to your soul. God bless you. Bye-bye.
And please share this testimony with others because it will help them too. God bless you. Bye-bye.